Good evening. Off the top at 11, a wet start to the week as subtropical storm Nicole takes aim at South Florida, parts of the East Coast already under a state of emergency. Nicole may be a hurricane when it makes landfall later on this week. Broward and Palm Beach counties are under a hurricane watch. We have live team coverage. Terrell Fournay is standing by with the preparations underway. But we begin with your weather authority team. Hurricane specialist and storm surge expert Michael Ari and our chief certified meteorologist Betty Davis here now with us with the very latest for us. Betty, take it away. Well, good evening, everyone. Let's get you the very latest advisory on subtropical storm Nicole. Winds of 45 miles per hour, so not a lot of change with its intensity. It's moving toward the northwest at 8 miles per hour, and clearly it's the system that still needs to organize in order to achieve that hurricane strength, and Michael's going to talk a lot more about that. In the meantime, here is the forecast cone on subtropical storm Nicole. No huge changes here moving westward as we push through Tuesday based on the forecast. And then by Wednesday night, early Thursday, it starts to approach the east coast of Florida, heads for a landfall, and it is forecast to strengthen to a hurricane. They're showing it as a category one as it nears that landfall. So it moves over to the northwest Bahamas, then makes a move on over toward the east coast of Florida. Now, as far as precisely pinpointing where that landfall will occur, uh, we can't be quite that detailed just yet, but clearly you can see it's on a track that takes it in the vicinity of the coast of Palm Beach County, maybe north of or maybe south of and as mentioned as a hurricane. So tracking Nicole, the big system that is is it is we are going to expect an increase in the rainfall across our area. We'll talk more about the winds related to this system. But as we bring in Michael, we want to talk a lot more about those coastal impacts. Michael, we cannot underestimate that. Yeah, you're right on that, Betty. And that's something that we're very confident in that this is going to be a big wide ranging coastal impact here for most of the Florida coastline. Take a look at the enhanced satellite picture this evening. And what you'll see here is this looks like a big comma shaped weather system. It doesn't look like the typical, very conventional looking tropical storm, the ball of convection. It is resembling, like I said, a comma head and the strongest winds with this well away from where the center of circulation is right now. So it's really the breath of the winds. Only about 2% of tropical or subtropical systems in the Atlantic have winds as far reaching as this one. So it's really the extent and the size of this one that makes us confident that this is going to be a big coastal event. You can see the winds for the most part, uh, tropical storm force or less. We're gonna be watching though that convection there toward the middle of your screen, right in here to see if this persists into the overnight hours. If it does, that may help to lower the pressures and for this storm to organize as our computer models have forecast. The story here, though, is not only the low pressure to the south, but also the high pressure to the north. The difference in that pressure gradient of that high pressure that's coming down from Canada into the northeastern states is going to produce the strong long fetch of winds across the ocean. And that's the concern here is that prolonged wind over a long period of time, pushing the water toward the shore, causing all sorts of coastal issues. The uh, waves right now, not too bad down here, but over the next few days, we expect the winds in the seas offshore uh, to reach up to 30 feet. Now this is offshore, but as we kind of get into Wednesday, you can see the seas at, uh, closer to the coastline here, five to 10 feet. These are waves that are breaking on top of storm surge. That's the still water rise in the water from the strong winds around this developing tropical system. Two to four feet is what the uh, storm surge forecast is uh, for parts of Broward and Palm Beach County, a little bit less down here, but we're going into the highest tides of the season. One, some of the highest tides of the season as we hit the full moon tomorrow. And that's what we're going to be looking for. Those high tides during the morning hours, tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, and then maybe even into Thursday morning, where as the tides come in uh, and have, you know, we have those high tides, you're going to have those breaking waves that are running up the shoreline, causing the coastal flooding, causing the beach erosion. You know, certainly this is not a situation where you're going to want to go uh, into the water and surf. These are not good surf conditions. Um, so please stay out of the water. We're going to see 
coastal flooding, widespread minor moderate coastal flooding, and all those familiar spots, especially along Biscayne Bay. And even though down here in uh, Miami-Dade County, parts of Broward County, you are under a storm surge watch. We're not under a storm surge watch explicitly, but those waves, we again expect very bad deteriorating coastal conditions starting tomorrow, worst on Wednesday, and then Betty will talk a little bit more about this later in the show. By Thursday, we're going to get the wrap wraparound side to this system with the drier weather, and then certainly by Friday, things clearing out. But a few bad days ahead of us of some really nasty coastal weather. Of course, we'll continue to keep you posted here as we get updates from the Hurricane Center.